Yes, yes, we're here. Who have I got today? Mr. Pascal. How you doing, bro? I'm very good, thank you, Dom. Okay, tell us a bit about yourself. Who are you and what do you do? I am a Metropolitan uh, Detective, Met Police Detective. Um, I've been with the Met nearly 18 years now. Um, past 11 years, I've worked in specialist crime, so I've worked on some high-profile murders uh, and gun-related uh, matters, um, as well as other things. Um, and now I um, am a huge advocate for getting more people from diverse backgrounds, um, black and white, into the Met. How are you doing that? By putting myself out there and talking about my experience, talking about why it's important that we have um, officers that uh, bring their life experience to the Met um, and how, you know, how they can make change and, and where the change is needed. Do you feel like officers bring themselves to work? Black officers, so it's good to talk about black officers, you know. Do you feel like they bring themselves, do you bring yourself to work? I do now. And why didn't you before? Because, probably because I, I, you know, there's a term that's been used now is when you shrink yourself. Yeah. Um, I didn't feel I had the space to be myself and I didn't even realise I was doing it. Bec um, and at the same time, I was so engrossed in what I was doing, my work, um, it, it really didn't seem that much of an issue to me. But over time, um, it became apparent to me that I wasn't being myself. Mm. Um, and, and it kind of destroys you inside. You kind of lose who you are. Mm. And, and, and you, how should I put it? You, you become segregated from your community and when your identity. When did you realize that you weren't bringing yourself to work, but black being your whole self? Oof. Like in probation? Because that for me, I, I can agree with what you're saying. Like I can, I can relate to it because in my first two years, I was just like, let's just not get fired. Let's just not get fired. Let's just not get fired. Because you know, in the first two years, it's like the time when the mech can just boot you out. But outside of that, it's, it's pretty difficult to get fired if you're just a you know, normal person. Yeah. I say normal, but you know. Um, for me, um, everything changed about four or five years ago when. I was um, going through being discriminated. I didn't even understand what I was going through at the time or even that mm. I was being discriminated against, but I knew the feeling wasn't good. Um, and I, I knew it was really making me sad uh, inside. Um, and when I came to the realization what was happening, um, I expected to be supported uh, when I challenged uh, this individual's behaviour, mm. and you know, for me, the the evidence was clear what that person was doing to me, um, and when the verdict, for choice of a better word, came back of no case to answer against him. Um, Those are my favourite words, by the way. Yeah, it was a in in the words of the Fed rep at the time. It's, it was a bitter pill to swallow. Mm. And for me, it was a reminder of the fact that, you know, I'm a black officer and um, I should know my place mm. when challenging a white officer. Mm. Um, and that really hurt, really hurt. Because, you know, we promote ourselves as one big family um, and he signed up to be a police officer to do the right thing, and I thought I was doing the right thing. I need to find out that um, it didn't apply to me. Mm. That's sad. I've been there. I think, I think a lot of um, like black police officers have probably been there, like a large proportion, and that leads me on to like, what the main reason we're here today to talk about. It's the um, discrepancies between... The, the being disciplined, that's it. The, the mayor's done his report, Sadiq Khan, because he looked into it, because as you know, 
there is a large disparity between white officers being disciplined, black officers or ethnic minority officers being uh, investigated. And it makes no sense because we make up uh, 3%. And yes, ethnic minorities make up 3%. We're 1,500, yeah, that you will take. There's how many in the Met? 43? 40, 43,000? Let's just say 40. And if we're only 15, yeah, 1%. Oh, where was the show with 1%? We're not 3%. Well, black officers, yeah. we have about 1,200 right. about twelve hundred black officers, yeah. black and ethnic minority, or the global majority, as I like to use, officers. Yeah. We have close to four to 5,000 in, in the organisation. Yeah. But that still is, you know, small in comparison to the 40-something thousand officers we have 3%. in the Met. And it doesn't reflect the community we serve either, where, you know, oh, in London, no, in, in London, all. which is the community we serve, yeah, so which is almost half of that is made up of uh, ethnic uh, yes. minorities. I thought it was like sixty percent. There you go. Yeah. Well, I could be wrong. I could be making up figures. I don't really make up figures, but I'm sure it's like <coughs> it's large. I'm sure you're not far off. Yeah, we make up four percent in the Met Police in London, approximately. It's probably going to be lower. It's going to get lower and lower because there's more officers being recruited now. So if we only make up like four, people will take five percent. Why are we being investigated at such a high rate? That's what for Sadiq Khan to highlight this is that's crazy. And an investigation clearly shows that this has happened. It's like what are the met? What how how do you? Well, okay, first first question is why do you think that happened? Because. Um, because there are forces within mm. policing not just here but in other countries too yeah. that undermine uh, the things that are put in place to uh, that will help the organization to progress and recruit from these backgrounds mm. so you know because the status quo is they're quite happy with the status quo so which is, which is how things have always been um, where you have black or ethnic minority officers not being promoted, uh, not um, staying in the Met because they're being forced out. Um, it's mm. about control, it's about power. But, you know, ultimately, you know, um, these people are afraid of change. Mm. But the thing is, you can't, you can't stop change from happening. You can slow it down, maybe, but ultimately it's going to happen. Yeah, and, agree. you know, for me, it can only be a good thing. Yeah, I, 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 I'm an advocate of mass participation. That's why I'm like, in terms of the black community, the more we have, the more likely we are to rise up to the top and be in positions of power and sergeants, inspectors, chief inspectors, blah, 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 blah commanders, all that. So it, it's just like twofolded for me. It's like we need more people to participate and we also need people to argue, like to rise up through the ranks. So the more people they are, the more we'll rise up through the ranks. But at the same time, it's clear that we're being investigated at a silly, silly, silly rate. And the, the Met's response to it, from what I know so far from all the reading that I've done, is their response is that they haven't really done anything. And that's an issue. The, the issue here is, um, you know, you're asking an organisation mm. that has little or no understanding of the communities it serves. And then we're blaming them when they get it wrong. It's like you asking me to sort out all the issues in the Chinese community. Yep. And then you're blaming when I get it wrong. Well, <laughs> what do I know? Yeah, of so, hence why we need people from the community we mm. serve. Uh, to come in and join the police because they are best placed to serve and understand and deliver to the needs of those communities we serve. And it's not necessarily about getting up the ranks because there's no point getting up the ranks if you're on your own and you've got no army to command. You're just going to get torn down. What you need is strong foundations, strong infrastructure and people in not just in policing, we need people on the independent advisory groups, we need people 
in council, we need people in all these organizations, mm. and that's how you forge ahead. You know, you just have to look at New York, Atlanta, how are they progressing? You know, what strategies are they using? Why are we not doing the same? Mm. Uh, is Atlanta with the black police like chief guy? Well, New York just in, uh, elected um, well its first black mayor, and on the back of that, we've had we've now got our first black, f not only black, our first female commissioner of the New York Police Department mm. who happens to be black, mm. and in Philadelphia, they've just promoted far, four black women to senior posts. Mm. You know, so. So, but yeah, it still goes into line with what I was saying. The it, participation, it, you need them to be there to get higher up. Absolutely, to, but they didn't just get there overnight. There was a process. Yeah, no, of course. Mm. And as part of that process, it's no point getting in those positions and pulling up the ladder behind you. Mm. We've got to... Do you feel that that's what's happening now with the officers that are there now? I think that... I don't. I can't say that for sure, but mm. I know in the past that's what it appears that has happened. Okay, yeah. I mean, I've seen it to an extent, maybe not to the same level as you, but I've seen it with. I I know at least one person that has done that, and yeah, but yeah. Um, what what do you think? Um, why do you think the mayor had to intervene in this situation? Do you get what I'm saying? Why Why is it taking the mayor to go actually? Why are all these black and Asian people being investigated? Why is it taking the mayor? Yeah, why? Do you, because really, maybe, maybe it's because he's he's Asian. He well, has a level of empathy. I get that, but why haven't we been like, hey guys, we're being investigated at some silly, silly rate? Why is the federation not going? We're having to represent black people and Asian okay. people at a silly, silly rate. Do you know right, what I'm saying? Because right. it goes through channels. Yeah. Like, all right. Let me answer. Yeah, sorry, First go. question. Okay, uh, Federation. Yeah. Okay. Um, you were talking about the Met Police Federation. Yeah, because those are okay. the ones that represent us. When so, like when I was in so trouble, yeah, they, they, they they represent us, but we're, we're we're the black fed reps. We're the black senior fed reps. Well, you know, we're, we're the, the 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 black and Asian faces in the union because I don't see anyone that looks like me or sounds like me or speaks for me. Yet, yeah, I'm supposed to put my trust and confidence in them on some whim that y you understand what I'm going through. There's a question, though. I get what you're saying. I agree with you. But is that lack of participation on the black and Asian community, though? Is it? Could that be an issue? No. Why not? Because I, I speak to the black community every day. Mm. And they want to interact. They want to talk. They want to engage. No, not in that sense. In the sense that we're, we're, we... we we don't see any of them in the positions in the, fed, in the Federation. Is that because we don't want to? Or is there literally a barrier saying, mm, we don't want too many black people here being fed reps? You have to ask them that question. Mm. Or because, uh, you know, I was in the union. I'm not in it now. I'm suspended. I'm kicked out. You know? So I want to ask you why you got kicked out? Because they don't see things from my perspective. What is your perspective? And I don't, and I don't go by the status quo. Mm. I'm mm. not here to serve the Federation. I'm here to serve the community and serve the officers that serve the community S and put their interests first. So you believe that the Federation doesn't represent us as such? Well, uh, they don't represent me because mm. there's no one in there that looks like me. No, so they that. can't represent me. Mm -mm -mm. I hear that. Yeah, do. They don't understand our issues. Mm. Is that for us to teach them? No, it's for them to go out and learn. It's not my job to teach them. I've had to teach myself. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a massive advocate for that. I don't believe in having to teach anyone about my culture or who I am because I'm like, wait a second, I've lived in this country all my life and I've learned your culture. I grew up around it. So exactly. If I can learn it, then you could probably spend Listen. some time learning some. You need to learn everything. Exactly. But you can learn some. Listen, I know about British culture. Mm -hmm. I know about my culture. Yep. They only know about their culture. Yeah, it's strange, that, isn't it? And when you try and share anything with them, I'm not interested, mm. is the response I get. Mm. So if you're not interested, 
then I can't help you. Yeah. The only way to rectify that situation is for someone like us to be there. So, but then I feel, I feel really sorry for them. You know, just, just imagine being high, like in the Federation and you're the only black guy there and you look left and look right, there's no one else there. And you're trying to explain, you're, you're the voice of every other black person in the Metropolitan Not just place. every black voice, a person. I, you know, when I was there, I represented everybody. I didn't just speak up for race. I spoke up for women. I spoke up for LGBTQ, yeah. people with disabilities. And what you have to, what these people have to realise is, it was only not that long ago when LGBTQ were fighting for their rights mm -hmm. in the police, when women were fighting for their rights in police, when Asians were fighting for their rights in police. Now, these people have got to certain positions, they forget about the struggles they face, and they need to speak up, you know, to ensure that people follow them, you know, with the, the same lived experiences, mm. that they come through. Otherwise, you're allowing this to continue and you're just leaving it for the next generation to fight. So, do you, well, I, I know I think there's, but do you think there's a link between the lack of recruitment and this ongoing investigation of constant officers? Because when you think about it, I've been under investigation, lost how many times? I can't remember how many times I've been investigated, but enough times for me to forget how many numbers. When I go home, I mean, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking highly of the Metropolitan Police when I go home. Because you, that's when, you're at, when you go home, and you see your wife, girlfriend, whoever, family members, and you're being investigated, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be telling them. It's not going to be glowing reports <laughs> back to the families. So that's obviously going to be like disseminated with, with, like, to the rest of the black community. You know, because that's, we, we do stuff word of mouth. So do you feel as though that is a big barrier? Because they, they must be interlinked. Not for me. You don't think so? Okay, go on. Because, you know... For me, I focus on the positives. Mm. I'm not naive or I don't turn a blind eye to the negatives. Of course there's negatives, but I focus on the positives. I focus on the people that have good intentions, that are doing a good job, and I want to work with them. So, and I, be, you know, and I believe in them. I, I look at all the good things that this organisation has done for me and I embrace the bad things that this organisation has brought to me because that is what has helped me to grow and that is what has helped to open my eyes and shape who I am. So, you know, I thank God for all of that, mm. all the good stuff and the bad stuff, you know, because it's God that put that stuff in front of me for me to learn. So, you know, it, can, it's, it, all, it all depends on how you approach it. If you're about growth and you and you want to overcome your fears um, and make a real difference, then you need to stop avoiding things. And by joining the police is one way you can really inspire people. Mm. No, it's, I it's, th it's through those struggles. People, you know, when I sit down and talk to officers that have come before me and I hear all these atrocious things that they've been through and they've got through it you know what you know the stuff I'm, I go through is it's a bit of discomfort compared to what they had to go through I could deal with that yeah uh, yeah that's a bit cool you know Paul Wilson obviously your friend yeah he, yeah 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 after hearing his story I'm like my life is easy exactly <laughs> exactly so let's let's just put up with a bit of discomfort and make it even easier for our kids to join yeah well and and and, and get to these positions because they will it's not a matter of if mm. it's a matter of when yeah no I agree I agree I just feel as though the as my friends I've got so one of my friends my good friends has actually recently joined I feel like I've done my bit for recruitment I got one person but at the same time I don't think it I think the Met do need to as an organisation need to fix the way that they do they investigate people they need to reform it massively because it, 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 to me there's no way it's not having a negative impact on the view of them and do you know what I'm saying and on their numbers and recruitment because the reality of it it's actually a really good job to do so why don't people want to do it well, 
dominant answer to that is um, you say the Met. I'm not waiting on the Met. Okay? It, the, it, the, the people that are in the power, that have the power to make these decisions and influence the change, it doesn't affect them. Mm. Okay? So there's no urgency. Okay? It affects me. It affects you. Mm. Yeah? So that's why I'm taking the ball by the horns. You should take the ball by the horns and push for change. Mm. And yeah, it's going to be an uncomfortable ride. But, you know, the, the determination I have <laughs> is not going to stop me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you just got to stay focused, not get involved in all the other politics and stuff that's going on because that's all a distraction. Set your goal, focus, you will get there. Yeah, no, I thought so. Stop, did. stop, you know, we, we keep, for too long, we, we keep waiting for change to happen, blaming the government, asking the Met to do this, do that. I'm not waiting on nobody. Stop waiting. You can change everything yourself. Do it yeah. yourself. No, I hear that. I agree with you. I agree on that. What I wanted to ask you about, because you're part of the BPA, you don't mind talking about that, do you? No, I don't mind. And for anyone that doesn't know what the BPA is, the Black Police Officers Association. Association? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, first of all, like, well, how your experience is there, do you think it was a good environment for... Is it, is it somewhere where black officers should be going? Is it somewhere where... It, because we talk about, you know, the federation, when you refer to them, the the BPA, are they a federation as well? Because this is for people that don't know, because I don't know that much, and you were in it, so it's good to ask you. Are they like a federation, or are they just an, or like, what are they, essentially, is what I'm asking. Um, the BPA uh, was set up to be that conduit between the black community and the Met. Mm. Um, it was set up by a gentleman uh, who was the highest ranking black police officer ever mm -hmm. in this country, Michael Fuller, QPM, yep. who was uh, chief constable for Kent, um, a a along with other people. Um, and it has been a force for good when it was set up. And, and I think it was set up on the back of what happened to Stephen Lawrence. Yeah. And everything else, and it start it started off well. I th I feel uh, over the last ten years, it's lost its way. Mm. Um, I don't know what they represent anymore. I don't see much coming from them. Um, I do see huge potential in what they can do. The brand, their branding is yeah, strong. Um, but um, as I said, it's. What do they do? Um, you'll have to ask mm. them that question because... Because I feel like that's the place where if you do have fed reps, if you are in trouble, if you've got any issues within the police, that's where you go if you want to see someone that reflects you. I agree. It's a, it's a black, so that's what it's called. It, it's black and Asians, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's black. Black Police Association is is the umbrella name for the Asian yeah. and the Muslim and the Sikh. Okay, so and all it, it covers every single minority yeah. essentially, and that's where I would go looking for it because, as I said, I've I've been I've been under investigation before, and I got given a like I got a white head rep, and it, it you would always want someone representing you that understands your struggle. Mm -hmm. And the argument would be is he, they do understand my struggle to an extent because they're also police officers, which I agree. Yeah. But there's a different type of struggle when you're not white. And I don't know if the person that's representing me understands that. And do I have time to evaluate that when I could possibly lose my job? No. Do you feel me? So it's just one less thing to worry about. And that is where I feel as though... Me personally, I haven't had any... No, I know. I think it's been like maybe 10 years any interaction with the BPA I mean, ah, that's a lie I lie I had one person I can't remember his name was top ready sergeant and he was part of it and he said that I could join and that was it yeah outside of that I've never met anyone from there that I know of that yeah. I could have but I feel like that is where it should be starting it should be there the BPA should be like yep 
we got all the fed reps, the black fed reps, we've got all the black this, we've got all the Asian this, we've got, and this is where you come. When you're in trouble, this is where we go. Do you feel me? And I think that's where it's lacking, or there's a gap in my knowledge, but I feel like it's lacking, because also you, you were there, so if you're saying it. Um, I'm saying, um, when I was in that situation, mm. I went there, and expecting all of those things to be in place, mm. and they weren't. They do have a representative, his name is John Holmes Yard. He's a staff officer. Um, but he's overwhelmed with cases because he's the only one that can represent. And he's representing black and Asian officers? And he's representing black... Only or yeah, or yes, specifically, or predominantly. predominantly black and Asian officers. But he's overworked and mm. underpaid. And as you know, as a, as, a, as a union representative, you don't get paid extra and you have to find your own time to do a lot of the yeah. work. Okay, for people that don't know this, like as Sean's saying, you don't get paid any extra for doing that job. So I'm just looking to the camera right now. You don't. So if it just, just dispel any rumours or anything that people think that people do it for extra money, you get none. You don't get any extra time? No. So it's just basically you facilitating it, working around your job that you have now. Yeah. So that's that's someone that's doing it because they actually want to. Yeah. They want to help you. So I mean, yeah. yeah. And th th these are the kind of people that we need more of. Yeah, and, and if you're lucky, you you know, and you're doing that job, you'll have a supervisor that supports you, but often the supervisors are under a lot of pressure themselves, so they don't want to, you, you know, relinquish you to do other things. But learning that, now you just told me that, that's a big problem. If you've got someone that essentially stops people from getting fired and defends them and represents them, that should be their one. That's a whole job. That is. So maybe it's something that the Met should be looking into to saying, okay, if you're a Fed rep, that's all you do for the job. If you want to do something outside of that, if you want to be doing that's on you, yeah. but predominantly this is your job because it's so important. Yeah. There are full-time roles in the Federation, but they are at the higher, at higher tier. Um, but as, as on our level, where mm. we need them to support us, the, yeah, you're right, absolutely right. But you know, there's. But here's 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 a quick point. That's great. Okay. Yeah, um, like yes, we have Fed reps. Yeah. But you also have police friends. What are police friends? It's basically if you're going to be interviewed by someone yeah. uh, regarding uh, a grievance or whatever or misconduct, whatever it is, um, you are allowed to bring a colleague or a friend to that meeting. And what can a colleague and friend do? And and. They're there, just there to witness, or you know, uh, and so to support you. To witness you, you getting destroyed. Witness you getting destroyed. <laughs> no, yeah. that's mad. They're, they're there to support you. Can they? Can they? Can they like intervene? As can they make comments or anything like that? Or are they just literally there as a the, support? They're ranking? there to support you. Um, usually, at the end of the interview, they'll be invited to say something. And you can also have a welfare officer there as well. What is the welfare? Okay, is it literally, are you okay, do you need to leave the room kind of person, friend, is that what it is? No, there's someone who's got an understanding of um, occupational health. Okay. If your friend, uh, you know, um, and, and you can bring them there as well because they will be clued up on what uh, what's available yeah. in terms of supporting you um, and, and what the Met could be doing or, or should be doing. Yeah, because for me, like, when, when I was under investigation, when I went into my, my meeting hearing, I had my fed rep, and I didn't have any friends with me. But I'm just thinking to myself, would I want any friends there? Because they're just going to go crazy. When they hear what you're up against, you know when it's, for me, it was so overwhelmingly untrue, and it was just farcical. I'm not going to say what happened, but it was that silly, that silly, that when I tell people about it, they're just like, what? So, I don't know, would they be any help? <laughs> someone sitting there would be being like, this is a lot, like, or, just imagine someone sitting there, and like, they're saying you're doing something, and I'm sitting there next to you saying, this is all a lie, this is why we're here. Is that even beneficial? Do the, are their thoughts taken into consideration? That's, that's, that's well, if, you know, first of all, you need to make sure it's recorded always, and that you get a copy there and then. Okay. Because, you know, if you wait for them to give you a copy or a transcript, you, you could be waiting a long time. So, yeah. you know, my advice to you is, is, is do that. And, and yes, um, I think it's important to have someone there with you because 
when you're under the spotlight and in that space, it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, mm. And it's hard, to, can be difficult to think or react to what's been thrown your way. I know that. So, yeah, it, I think it's a good thing to have someone there. Because mm. that never, like, yeah, my, f- my, my friend would never even said that. Like, it didn't even say, oh, do you want to bring a friend in or anything like that. Mine was, <sighs> mine was a bit strange. Mine was one where I got allocated one. And I think I met him, I spoke to him on the phone a few times. He, he, he even referenced the fact that he didn't know that I was black. And it was funny because he was just like, I read your name. And I thought you were like Eastern European or something. I thought the Eastern European name. But he was just like, oh yeah. And because of the circumstances, he was just like, oh. And then when he realized I was black, he was like, oh. <laughs> because okay. in the context of what they were accusing me of, yeah. they were like, ah, okay, I get why you're here. And that in itself is an issue. But yeah, yeah, it's but, yeah my, my best advice to mm. you and anyone in your position is do what I did. What was that? Teach yourself. Mm. Read up on employment law. Read up on policy and procedure. Familiarise yourself with it. Mm. Because no one can represent you better than yourself. This is true. That is a wise words. Because I, I don't know how much I know about policy and procedure. I normally just read just for like, for me, I just read up just before. But mine was so stupid that I, 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 I can talk about what. Yeah, it's over now. I can talk about it now. Um, I can say what happened to me, and I got, um, it was for incivility, because I laughed at a police officer. Imagine that I got a written warning for laughing at a police officer. And then I always say... Then okay, we, we all need to get one for there incivility. There you go, and that was my argument. I, was, I refuse to apologise for laughing, because I'm allowed to laugh. Because it was so silly. And the, the list of what, do you know when they write out your um, is it MM1? MM1? MM1, yeah. Your MM1. On the MM1, does it have all the stuff that you've done? Yeah. Mine was so long. All this stuff that I was accused of. And then it's, out of that, they had to scour and look through. What did he do? Because what I've done is I've just batted away every single thing they've accused me of. So I know that's, that's rubbish, that's rubbish, that's rubbish, that's rubbish, that's rubbish. And the only thing they could get me on was that you laughed. Because I, I the, I was asked, did you laugh? And I said, yeah, of course I laughed, because it was farcical. It was, yeah. it was a silly, silly accusation, you accusation by silly people. You said the word get me on. Hmm? So did you feel they were out to get you? Of course. I, I, I've got, I will never hide that. Um, the, the, the inspector at the time was out to get me, and I found it strange. I always, this is what I always find strange. The Metropolitan Police, we base stuff. When we're finding someone guilty, it's based off of law. Yeah, it's the law. It is you have done this and it is against the law. You have broken the law to do this. When we're judged on internally, it's got the law does just goes out the window. Yeah. It's oh yeah, this is our policy. Our policy has no reference to the law and our policy is you laughed at someone and that wasn't nice. So you made someone feel upset and it's like, okay, cool, if that's how we're going, oh do we include fairness in this? Mm. So is well, it you know, policy and procedure, the way it's set up, it, uh, it, may be, it may work and it may be lawful within the confines of your employer. Yeah. But beyond those confines, in the confines of employment law or law, um, it will often fall short. So that's why I work to the law, um, ultimately, mm-hmm. because um, policy and procedure as you saw on that race of Lewis Hamilton the other day, they can change the about rules. To trigger a whole bunch of people with that coming. They can change the rules at any time, even yeah. during the race. Yep, during the race. You know, yeah, uh, what happened to policy through. and procedure then? What happened to the rules then? And unfortunately, that happens. That happens a lot. You, yeah, it's, it's they, not a good look. Yeah. It's so they, they undermine their own policy and procedure when it suits them. Yeah, I find that so strange. Because you educated me on law, and then you just go, yeah, well, right now this doesn't matter. Yeah. Let's just talk yeah, about forget that. Stuff. Well, let's not talk about that. I want to yeah. talk about this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it needs yeah. to be handled. And, uh, oh, I have this conversation so much about um, subjectivity, because policy is subjective. They, they, they apply it whenever they feel like, and how they feel like. And it's like, well, in terms of, like, the discipline, I'm like, well, wait a second. For discipline to be fair... 
across the board, should it not, if, and it's going to be subjective because it's just policy, it's not law, so there's no, it's like, shouldn't it be the same person doing it all the time? Because to, you see something totally different to me, we have different experiences. So when you have different people with different experiences judging the exact same situation, you're going to come up with different answers. Yeah. Is that fair? No, it's not fair. I think you should have perhaps like uh, some sort of panel, mm. like you have magistrates, some sort of external scrutiny panel that will, you know, that, that will look at everything in its entirety. Mm. Um, and I think you're more likely to come out for fairer verdict that way but when it's just done internally um, and you know it could be anyone mm. um, it's it's well you've, you've seen for yourself that the, the figures speak for themselves the the outcomes yeah yeah well it's it's, it's the figures are sad and hopefully hopefully since the well thing is they haven't really made many strides they've only had reflective learning that's the only thing I could find that they've implemented since the mayor's um, report and I don't know how much that's going to benefit um, non you know, or mem uh, black and ethnic minorities and yeah anyone that's not white realistically I don't know how that's going to because they, they, they claim the issue is that they can't have a conversation with black officers or Asian officers about an issue so they just go straight to the, the rule book and that's why it's so high and if that's the case for for, the, for those officers how are they managing members of public well you know the, the type of conversation they want to have with black officers is more of a one-way conversation yeah um, and it's you know it's not really about um, listening, but about telling. Mm. Um, so it's always going to go one way. That that you know, um, you know, I've tried having these conversations, and the the thing is, um, when you don't have an argument, mm. you tend to raise your voice. Yeah, that doesn't go well. And that's, and that's what happens. They raise their voice because they don't have an argument. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you mean. That's not good. But before we wrap up, I want you to tell us, because you are, um, can I say, famous guy. You're out there in the social media world, aren't you? So you can tell me more about that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm out there in the social media world. Um, because yeah, I feel it's important that we have officers that look and sound like me, not just that we're not just a face, we're a <coughs> voice, um, we're a human being. Um, and I feel it's important that we represent um, our communities and the, you know, and, and, and I think we're quite fortunate in this in the sense that because we work in police, we see things from a, a unique perspective. Yep. And it's about sharing that perspective with mm. a wider audience and helping them to see and understand why um, I do what I do. What uh, do you do? Well, you know, I protect people's rights. Ultimately, I'm here to serve the community and make sure that we do things fairly. Um, That's the main thing. And and you know and and that we hold people accountable. Um, you know that's that's my job. That's what I've I've sworn an oath to do. So when are you going to be like a command board commander? Uh, Nintendo. No, I've got I've got no aspirations to. To go to those, I've got no aspirations to go to those heights. Come on, man! No, it's not. About, it, it's not about me. It's about making sure that the young uh, officers, all the other officers around me, mm. are supported so they yeah. can get to their, that that position. That's that's how I see my role. It's about empowering them. Well, I feel like, even though yeah, you're correct, and I agree with you, you should still still be aiming to go up because you're influential, and you. You're an intelligent person, and 
you're honest. I'm not saying that other people aren't, but it's, it'll be good to have you somewhere where you can disseminate that information. Like, you can push it downwards on, on other officers and educate them that way. I, I feel I do uh, that already. Need. I feel I do that already, but mm. I don't need to go up the ranks to do that. Mm, and, and, and that's, you know, that, that's... You know, I, I'm trying to demonstrate that, you know, you don't have to go up the ranks to, to influence change or to empower people or to po get that message out there. I'm doing it at the, my lowest rank. I'm a DC, but I'm still ab able to navigate and, 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 and do that. It's just, you know, it's just how you go about it, how you conduct yourself. Okay. So before we sign off, you got a website? I do. What is it called? It's called Black Wall Street Media. I've heard of that as well. Not because Sean told me, it's because it's awesome. So you can check that out. What else? Um, you YouTube? know, sorry? You've got YouTube? Yeah, it's, if you go on the website, you'll, you'll find all the links to YouTube and all the other social media platforms. So Black Wall Street. A lot of people don't know about Black Wall Street, you know? A lot of people do. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? It's the last, I feel it was pushed out in social media in the like last two years. Yeah. Two or three years, people were like, oh my God, there was a place called Black Wall Street. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we knew. But, you know, the whole idea behind Black Wall Street, it's, it's about putting a positive message out there. Yeah. It's not about undermining mm. anyone or getting involved in who did what to who. It's about representation, mm. you know, and it's about, you know, letting other people want to find out, giving them a place to go and, and find out about other cultures and... It's about awareness, it's about collaboration, it's about so many things, yeah. you know. Um, so I use it for a force for good. As it should be. As it should be. Yeah. But we'll wrap it up today. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah, and we will have you again soon. I definitely, def we'll have you with someone else. I don't know, is there anyone that you want to talk with or talk to? That would be great. Yeah, the commissioner. The commissioner. Um, I'd love well, to. Well, yeah, that would be great. That, that I don't would know be how great. Many I mean, I think a lot of people will be begging for that one. Or, or um, Ken Marsh. Ken Marsh. Ken Marsh, I need to get contact. Yeah, I'd love to go and hear Ken Marsh. Or, you know, anyone, you know. I just, just make sure I don't have to, like, put you at different ends of the I'm table. Not, uh, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not anti-white. I'm not anti <laughs> any. you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm all about love, cohesion, working together. And mm. I'm here, I'm just here to be a conduit for change because change will happen it's yep. just can't stop it you can't stop it so let's work together and make sure it, it happens the right way okay well thank you for that that is the end of our day today we will be seeing you soon definitely and check out black wall street media yeah black wall street media thank you very much thank you dom